morning all of you. Uh, so we have uh, completed nearly about 10 classes so far. Uh, I hope uh, most of you are following uh, what, what, are, what is happening in all these 10 classes um, and uh, I think the first tutorial is due on 14th of this month and I will also most likely uh, early next week upload the second tutorial on similarity solutions okay. So most likely we will complete the similarity solutions in the next couple of classes and start the integral uh, analysis for external flows okay. Um, so we have quite a few topics to cover so I have to move a little bit fast and I hope uh, your earlier knowledge of uh, fluid mechanics will help you um, in uh, covering all the things that we won't be discussing here okay. Uh, so let us continue with the Faulkner scan similarity solutions uh, that we had uh, derived yesterday for these are for flows with pressure gradient. And the final similarity differential equation appears in this particular form and uh, these are the boundary conditions and uh, once again uh, you have to use the shooting method to solve the ODE numerically. Uh, I have also given you the three first order ODEs to which it can be reduced and the same boundary conditions like that of the Blasius equation. So once you uh, solve this uh, for uh, Okay, so one more thing is that, um, so these are some of the velocity profiles if you solve the ODE by the shooting uh, technique and uh, this is how the velocity profiles look and these are the similarity profiles. So I am plotting eta on the y axis and f prime which is nothing but the non-dimensional velocity on the x axis and I can substitute different values of m into this and for each value of m I can solve the ODE by shooting method and I can plot the profiles. For example m equal to 0 this is the flat plate case you get a profile something like this exactly similar to the Blasius profile and for positive values of uh, m greater than 0 some say like 0.33 something like this so 1 it is something like this. So um, if you look at m equal to 1 this is the stagnation point flow right. and this is your flat plate all right okay so therefore uh, if you look at your uh, values of m which are basically increasing okay so the profiles are in this particular fashion and for for the values of beta the wedge angle i mean uh, let me once again draw the representation so that you can understand okay so you can you tell me how the m and beta are related or beta pi is your wedge angle beta by 2 minus beta okay so for negative values of beta that is I was giving an example when you roll this uh, in the anti clockwise direction so so that they both coincide that that is the m equal to 0 case and if you roll it further roll this particular surface further down it becomes negative okay for the negative values typically if you make it more and more negative you will get adverse pressure gradient flows right the one the example that we have seen yesterday and for a particular value for m which is exactly minus 0 0.091 you will see the flow is separating okay so at this particular uh, location the boundary layer theory will not be valid anymore so there is no point in going further less than minus 0 0.091 so this is the limit of m where you can up to which you can go negative and uh, the value of m up to which you can also uh, go on the other side for typically we are more interested up till the stagnation flow so we can go up to m equal to one okay so what is happening to the uh, velocity uh, gradients so typically if you want to calculate 
set u by d eta as you keep increasing your m what is happening to d u by d eta huh? it is smaller hmm? so typically if you if you are saying okay so I say this is this is my eta range okay if you compare point 3 to so this is my change here okay this if I if I look at uh, f for this value so in which case uh, your gradient is higher whether it is, is it for 0 0.32 or whether it, it is for so he in this case your eta values are this is your d eta here for this value of df prime and this is your d eta here okay in which case the d eta will be more hmm? for this case so therefore in which case the gradient will be higher uh, for this case okay so as you keep increasing your m okay the velocity gradients become more and more steeper okay so therefore uh, so this is uh, to do with the particular uh, kind of flow that you are looking at so typically what you can do uh, i'll give you some problems where you can substitute the corresponding configuration according to the value of m and you can get these profiles and you can try to see how the variation in the slope appears to you okay so this is all with respect to the solution uh, we are more interested in the derived quantities like uh, the skin friction coefficient for the flow as far as the flow is concerned so we can calculate the skin friction coefficient locally so this is nothing but nu du by dy okay now if you substitute everything in terms of the similarity variables so you will be getting an expression which is like this in terms of f and eta okay so this depends on the curvature at the wall this by now you all know for the case of flat plate the value of this is 0.332 so this leads to the familiar expression cf is 0.664 by square root of reynolds number okay so now all we need to know is for a given configuration what is this curvature at the wall once we know that we can calculate the skin friction coefficient locally for that particular configuration so once you solve the equations by the shooting method for different values of m we can have a nice tabulation where we can tabulate the curvature terms for different configurations So the, for the value of beta, this is the value of m, and this is d square f by d eta square at eta equal to zero, and this is the particular configuration or case that it corresponds to. Okay, so beta equal to uh, one point six. Okay, so one point six times pi. So you will find that uh, this is something like this okay or maybe you can say it becomes like this you have a flow which is like this right it is much more than 1 so it is much more than so your average angle is more than pi all right so in this particular case you can you can have uh, flows like this and uh, the corresponding value of m will be equal to 5 if you substitute into this expression okay if you compute uh, the slope the curvature at the uh, surface this will be 2.6344 exactly in fact you can do it in fact I will give you an exercise where you can do it and compare with these values okay should be getting the same values and now the case of uh, beta equal to 1 m equal to 1 and uh, 1.2326 what is this case stagnation flow all right so beta is 0 0.5 m is 1, 1 over 3 and the corresponding value is 0 0.75746 beta equal to 0 m equal to 0 what will be the value 0 0.332 
this is the flat plate and point uh, 0 0.14 the corresponding value of m will be minus 0 0.0654 and uh, the corresponding value is 0 0.16372 okay and finally minus 0 0.1988 okay corresponding value of m can you guess what is the corresponding value of m minus 0 0.091 okay that is this particular case that we have So what do you think will be the curvature for this? This is a separated flow, okay. At the point of separation, what is the slope? What will be du by dy for separated flow? So if you if you have a if you have a flow, suppose uh, you have a gradient like this, and here you plot. You have profile like these okay now at the point of separation your profile becomes like this and after that in fact it will be like this okay So this is dp by dx greater than 0 okay this is separation point this is separated flow so you can visualize the flow coming like this and at this point detaching and then you have a nice big separation bubble here okay so what what how do you check that flow has separated or it is about to separate huh? what is that? not curvature first you go to the first derivative before you go to second derivative huh? du by dy for the separate for a condition what is the condition for separated flow hmm? du by dy at y equal to 0 equal to 0 this is the case okay once it is separated what is the condition there it should be negative okay therefore what will happen to curvature when it is at the separation state 0 right so this has to be 0 and this is a separation case separated flow all right so I think uh, this is uh, giving you final summary. and uh, special case where we can apply the stagnation flow if you look at uh, flow past a circular cylinder okay so this is your radii r and this is your approaching free stream velocity which is constant and then the free stream now when it travels over the surface it becomes a function of your local coordinate x and where x is defined in this particular fashion okay that is the sector location sector distance starting from this point where it is 0 okay. So uh, if you look at the uh, case of flow past the circular cylinder from the potential flow theory you can actually calculate how the u infinity is varying locally okay. So the profile is given I think you must have studied this in your incompressible flow course so u infinity by u any guess how it varies if you go along the periphery or the circumference of the uh, particular uh, cylinder how does the local free stream vary 
what what how what is the value of uh, velocity here it has to be zero and where does it reach maximum where where your theta equal to pi by 2 okay and x is equal to r theta basically so x by r should be equal to pi by 2 at that location it becomes the maximum okay so it should be a sinusoidal variation okay only you have sin 0 is 0 sin pi by 2 is 1 so if you say u infinity x by u infinity it has to be a sin variation and what should be the variable x by r all right maybe i can use capital r because this is your uh, radii of the cylinder and what should, what factor should come here at x by r equal to pi by 2 this will become 1 does u be, u infinity become u infinity there hmm? it should be 2 because it becomes exactly twice the because it has to accelerate again from here once it accelerate it has to go more than the free stream velocity there okay so this is your inviscid velocity profile for a circular cylinder now if you are looking at region values of x which are which are very small that means close to the stagnation region okay so then you can approximate this sin x by r as simply x by r for small values of x okay so for small values of x by r that is close to the stagnation you can write your u infinity by constant free stream velocity as 2 x by r okay so therefore if you look compare this with your uh, Falkner scan form of velocity profile which is like something like u infinity of x is c x power m so what can you deduce what should be value of m what should be the value of c if you compare these two c is equal to 2 u infinity by r okay and what is the value of m hmm? 1 okay so therefore this profile will be something like okay so what kind of flow does it mean stagnation point flow okay so when you are looking at region close to the stagnation even for a curved uh, surface like cylinder okay you can approximate the flow pattern to be similar to the stagnation point flow for which we have already calculated the profiles and the curvature at the wall okay so this is a very important thing so it does not limit the Falkner scan solution does not mean it is only applied to a wedge configuration like this it can even apply to any stagnation flow even for a bluff body like this not it does not need to have a sharp corner okay provided you are look, looking at only region close to the stagnation region so if you simply use uh, c equal to 2 infinity by r so this is nothing but the stagnation flow okay the same solution will hold for the cylinder also as well okay so this is a very important uh, useful co correlation because to calculate for example the heat transfer in the stagnation region of a cylinder you can solve the uh, energy equation from the Falkner scan solution and you can apply that to get the local Nusselt number profiles for the cylinder okay okay so for small values of x your sin theta can be replaced as theta right okay so therefore now we will move on to the heat transfer uh, problem so the boundary layer energy equation when you uh, write it down for the flows with pressure gradient or without pressure gradient they are both the same okay so 
So without the viscous dissipation term, this is your energy equation where your theta is defined how? T minus T W by T infinity minus T W. So I want my uh, temperature profile to look identical to the velocity profile. All right, and the boundary conditions at y equal to zero, your theta should be. It should be zero. Okay, if I if I had defined my theta this way, okay, it has to be similar to the velocity profile, right? So at y going to infinity, theta should be one. Okay. Now what I can do from the definition of uh, the similarity uh, variable that I use also from the definition of stream function which is a function of the similarity variable I can plug in for u v convert all x and y in terms of uh, eta okay the same way that we did for the Blasius energy you can you can apply that here because there is, it is no different and except that uh, when you write the similarity uh, variable eta here this is a function of u infinity of x by nu x rather than simply u infinity in Blasius. So when you differentiate this with respect to x you have to be careful now you have to account for the variation of this so you can substitute cx power m okay and then you, have to, you can differentiate it okay so for example I will if you say that this is y square root of cx power m by nu x so this can be written as y square root of c by nu into x power m minus 1 by 2 okay therefore if you say you are d eta by dx so this will be y square root of c by nu into m minus 1 by 2 into x power what if I differentiate what should I get exponent m minus 3 by 2 so I can write that as m minus 1 uh, by 2 minus 1 okay so once again y c by nu x power so this entire thing is what eta so this will be m minus 1 by 2 into eta by x okay so you should take care when you are uh, differentiating and transforming the variables now that your free stream velocity is a function of x okay so appropriately you do all the substitution and transform this in terms of uh, the similarity variable and everything in terms of f and uh, you will get the the similarity uh, equation for energy d square theta by d eta square okay so this is your energy equation okay for the case of uh, m equal to 0 this reduces to the flat plate energy equation similarity solution okay so, so additionally here you have m plus 1 by 2 because of the factor of m which comes in in the free stream velocity okay if you substitute all of that you will definitely be able to reduce this and the boundary conditions as eta going to 0 theta equal to 0 eta going to infinity theta equal to 1 all right okay so once you know the uh, flow you know the value of f you plug it in for a corresponding value of m you can solve this once again by shooting method okay the same way that uh, we have been doing and you can get the profiles for theta as a function of eta all right so the same procedure repeats here now what I am going to give is just the way we tabulated the curvature at the wall for the velocity uh, profiles I am going to give you once uh, you substitute and get the values you can get the slope at slope of the temperature at the wall for different values of m 
okay for different configurations how does it look because this is required to calculate the nusselt number nusselt number depends of upon the temperature slope at the wall okay so if you do the tabulation so d theta by d eta at theta equal to 0 okay so m the Prandtl number now you should realize the temperature profiles are now function of your velocity profile your Prandtl number and your m okay so for a given value of m for a given value of m you know the velocity profile put that function the value of m and also the Prandtl number which you want to calculate so both of all the three have to be simultaneously fixed of course if you fix your m you fix your f also okay and also you have to decide which Prandtl number you are calculating so you can tabulate this for different values of Prandtl number so for m is minus 0 0.0753 okay okay i'm just uh, giving you some value of m here for which uh, if you have prandtl number of 0.7 this value becomes 0 0.242 okay i'm just tabulating all the values here okay so anybody remember now value of m equal to 0 plus flat plate what should be the value of Prandtl number 0 0.7 probably I must have uh, yeah I think you can calculate and tell me what should be the value of uh, d theta by d eta for Prandtl number 0 0.7 okay so for Prandtl number of 1 what should be the value Point 0.332 yeah because uh, for the case where your Prandtl number equal to 1 I mean the velocity and the temperature profile should be identical so the, the curvature d, d cube uh, d square f by d eta square should be exactly equal to d theta by d so this should be 0 0.332 so this value should be 0 0.332 into Prandtl number power 1 by 3 okay so what should be the value so it will be something like 0 0.292 it will be reduced so then this is 0 0.307 and 0.585 this is 0 0.730 so so on so if you go to m equal to 1 the stagnation flows 0 0.496 0 0.523 okay so these are some kind of values I am just giving you this because tomorrow uh, when I ask you to compute uh, using the shooting method you should be able to match with these uh, tabulated values all right so why we are calculating the slope okay so because we finally are interested in the heat transfer coefficient and Nusselt number So therefore you can define your local heat transfer coefficient the same way the wall heat flux divided by T wall minus T infinity okay if you substitute for minus K dt by dy at y equal to 0 and uh, write in terms of uh, d theta by d eta you should get K T wall minus T infinity into so you can write your uh, dt by dy as uh, d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0 into d eta by dy 
okay which is nothing but square root of u infinity by nu x divided by t wall minus t infinity okay so finally if you de define your nusselt number local nusselt number as hx by k so that will result in d theta by d eta theta equal to 0 into so you have a x here so square root of u infinity x by nu which is nothing but your hmm? if you if you divide it if you divide uh, multiply h into x by k so what happens to this particular term huh? Reynolds number square root of Reynolds number okay this is the same as what we did for the flat plate okay there is nothing new here only thing you should now know for which configuration the value of d theta by d eta you have to pick put it there and then you will get the Nusselt number prof profile for that particular uh, value of m okay and also now it is a function of Prandtl number so you may have to fit a curve as a function of Prandtl number and you should bring the Prandtl number dependence okay now for the stagnation point flow if you are interested in values of Prandtl number about 1 okay that is something in this particular region right here okay you can in fact fit a curve to the uh, values of uh, d theta by d eta in this Prandtl number regime close to 1 and you will get a nice curve fit of this particular form which is 0.57 times Prandtl number to the power 0.4 can you can you just uh, check if can you substitute Prandtl number as uh, 0 0.8 and check whether you are getting something close to 0.523 okay so so this is this is the kind of fit that you can do for m equal to 1 around Prandtl number close to 1 okay so you are not saying here Prandtl number is exactly 1 it has some Prandtl number dependence but I mean the dependence is relatively kind of similar you know you have about 0 0.5 to 0 0.57 variation here okay so therefore if you substitute for that so your d theta by d eta is a function of Prandtl number now this becomes 0 0.57 into rex power half Prandtl number to the power 0 0.4 so this is the case for m equal to 1 Prandtl number close to 1 okay so this is the local variation that you find for uh, the stagnation point flow case of course you are you know the variation with respect to Prandtl number for m equal to 0 Polhausen already did that he did the curve fit for different values of Prandtl number small Prandtl numbers intermediate and large and you can use those values okay does it uh, does it make sense okay so that this is a reasonably good fit okay for Prandtl number close to 1 okay now now so we this is one one example to show you for the stagnation for example stagnation flow how we can uh, define the local variation in Nusselt number okay so all this can be also equally verified by you you can calculate the values of uh, the slope compare that for different values of m and Prandtl number with the tabulated values and you can yourself correlate with these uh, uh, values right here okay so now one more thing as we said if you look at the flow past a cylinder okay the, the flow that we are looking at right here so apart from u infinity suppose you heat this particular surface so you are maintaining this at t wall equal to constant okay so this is a flow apart from the flow you also have a temperature profile okay now this u infinity is a function of x here whereas still it is having some temperature t infinity so you have a velocity boundary layer you have a thermal boundary layer which is simultaneously growing so if you are interested in the stagnation region 
for the cylinder what is the variation in the Nusselt number okay. So now as we as we already shown you can describe that by the stagnation flow m equal to 1 the same correlation will apply for this region as well okay. Now x is defined in this particular manner okay where this is your uh, r this is your origin okay. So now it is it is not so convenient to operate in terms of local x for a cylinder and sphere what is a more con convenient uh, uh, characteristic length instead of x diameter okay. So usually when you talk about cylinder flow path circular cylinder the characteristic length that is chosen is the radius or diameter of the cylinder okay. So therefore we can transform your local x into terms of r similarly in the Reynolds number also and we can define a Reynolds number based on the characteristic length which is the radius of the cylinder okay. So if you do the transformation so you already know so how do you do this transformation you already know that your Rex is defined based on u infinity x into x by nu. So this is the definition of your local Reynolds number right now so where you are defining based on your local velocity. Yeah that is how that is how we have to transform we will see how we will transform it okay. So now you can replace this as uh, you can write this as 2 u infinity you can you can uh, you can write your u infinity in terms of u infinity of x in terms of 2 u infinity x by r so this is your local uh, velocity profile related to the free stream velocity profile for the stagnation region okay. So you can substitute for u infinity in terms of the constant free stream velocity x and r okay if you do that this will be x by r into x by nu okay. So now what I can do is I can multiply and divide by uh, r so I can say that this is r. and there will be an x square by r square okay. So therefore uh, this is how my uh, local Reynolds number is related to now I can define I, I can define this as my Reynolds number based on the radius of the cylinder okay which is nothing but u infinity r by nu this is now this is the constant free stream velocity okay and the characteristic dimension is the radius. So now I have transformed from the local uh, velocity and the local coordinate I have transformed that to constant velocity and a fixed coordinate okay. so the, the fixed dimension here is r okay and you have a factor x square by r square therefore if you substitute you can you can find that your current nux is also hx by k right if you substitute for rex from there you can finally uh, write nu in terms of the radius which is nothing but hr by k so you have a 2 square root of 2 which comes out and multiplies with 0 0.57 that becomes 0 0.81 and this will be r e r to the power half and your Prandtl number to the power 0 0.4 okay. So this is what you finally get in terms of uh, fixed dimensions r and so this is the expression for the cylinder when you look at the stagnation flow okay so in terms of the cylindrical dimensions okay so you can simply transform from your local coordinate to the uh, cylinder's fixed uh, dimensions which is basically the radius 
okay the same way you can also do that for sphere okay for the case of uh, three dimensional uh, wedge flows okay now whatever we were discussing so far are our two two dimensional wedge flows the same two dimensional wedge flows can be transformed using what is called as a Mangler's transformation okay so if you if you happen to go through the boundary layer theory by Schlichting okay so he talks about three dimensional boundary layers so they are one way of uh, uh, deriving the similarity solution for three dimensional wedge flows is to take the two dimensional wedge flow solution apply what a particular kind of transformation called Mangler's transformation and you will get the similarity solution for three dimensional wedge flows and for that particular case where m equal to 1 for three dimensional wedge flows that is the stagnation region stagnation flow for three dimensional uh, wedge flows and that will be similar to the stagnation region flow for sphere in 3D okay like we have equivalent to uh, a 2D wedge flow stagnation region we can correlate that to stagnation region of a cylinder same way a three dimensional axisymmetric wedge flow stagnation uh, flow can be correlated to the stagnation region of a sphere okay so you can also have a similar relationship for Nusselt number for a sphere from the applying the Mangler's so anyway Mangler's transformation is beyond the scope of this class so I am I'm just giving you an idea uh, that you can also do that for three dimensional wedge flows okay so I think uh, with that we have uh, more or less uh, uh, covered the flows with uh, pressure gradient terms any any questions so far whatever we have done Uh, that uh, stagnation point. Hmm. Uh, how can we denote? R is same. Theta equal to pi by two. Yes, zero. yes. So this, this, uh, just only, just only says uh, the Nusselt number in the stagnation region. That's it. That is, that is only for that. Okay. So it is not really. You are not really going, varying the x because variation in the x is actually confined to a small region near the stagnation point. So you just uh, say that what is the stagnation point Nusselt number for example okay so based on the free stream Reynolds number and for a particular value of Prandtl number you directly get the Nusselt number in the stagnation region of a cylinder okay you do not once again look at the local variation of the Nusselt number and things like that because the stagnation region is a very small region correct so the next class uh, on Tuesday what we will do for the same wedge problem okay now the wedge problem that we have taken we can add one slightly one complicated boundary condition which is so far we have assumed that your no slip exists at the wall which is correct but it is quite possible you can have some small vertical velocities at the wall correct so, so this is your local coordinate x and y so therefore you can have your v velocity and u velocity at 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 the wall anyway your u velocity is equal to 0 because that it cannot slip tangentially but it is quite possible that you are blowing or you can suck you know this is called flows with transpiration okay so this this is a typical flow with transpiration so in that case you can have a small value of vertical velocity at the wall it will not be that much but it will be small enough so typical applications are if you are looking at boundary layer separation control okay so typically you can uh, blow some small velocity okay in order to control the separation point or if you have a massive separation you can suck the separation bubble by means of uh, flow suction and therefore you can avoid separation so typically in like air foils now you can do this kind of uh, flows to control the drag and uh, uh, no, uh, stalling of uh, the airfoil and so on okay so these these are these are extension of the same uh, Falkner scan solution the same solution or same equation the similarity equation what we derived will exist and you hold true for this case also only the boundary condition will now change 
okay so far we have said at y equal to 0 v equal to 0 but now will v v v has a small component so that has to be included and we can use that as a more generalized solution okay so if you do this solution this will be the most general solution for whatever we have seen till, till now okay that includes all kinds of configurations also different kinds of boundary conditions for limiting case where v equal to 0 it becomes the solution that we had derived till now so okay we look at this particular case in the next class and with that we will complete the similarity solutions okay.